Hello again guys and welcome back to our uh, build of the uh, Hammond Volcano Mercedes SLR. Uh, so as per last episode we're going to jump into detailing of the engine and uh, so we're going to start with the uh, instructions here on the uh, Aber detail set and uh, now the, the hinge mechanism which involves the hood we're going to leave until later on when uh, we actually fit the body panels on. So we're just trying to get the main chassis done so we can start working on the body alignment. Um, so with that, we're going to look at the engine detail provided here in the, uh, the Hammond set. Now, the uh, Hobby Designs uh, HD030131 kit uh, doesn't really include that much engine detail um, find the instructions for it and they don't really give that much uh, engine detail as you can see there's a couple of odd bits here and there but that's mostly on the top of the, uh, the inlet manifold uh, supercharger and whatnot those can be added on after uh, as well as some placards going on behind the headlamps um, but as far as the the fan goes so where the radiator is and uh, the front of the wheel wells there's not really that much that uh, the hobby design kit offers however that's where the uh, the Aber kit comes in. So we've got some detail here uh, for the fan shroud. We've also got some detail up here for the uh, radiator shroud as well. And then we've got some latch pins here and on the front of the wheel wells. So we'll go ahead and jump into getting that all sorted. Okay, so after a brief cat feeding session, uh, we're back here at the bench. Um, so now it's calling out here in the instructions for part number 27. Uh, these are in Polish. There's not a lot of English, you know, going on here. But in the instructions, it does uh, give kind of rough pictograms of what to do when uh, it calls it for an instruction. So, for instance, here it says "bend" calls for bending. So. We put two and two together and we figure, oh, maybe we should bend the uh, ends of the shroud here. Um, now it does, on the back, I don't know if you can see them, but they're very faint, very faint little marks uh, where it's to bend on. And so what we've done is gone around with a pair of flatten those needles and uh, we've bent those ones so we can go ahead and take the very end bend it back now a lot of the, it's not as thin photo etch as a lot of other photo etch frets that I've had to deal with um, so it's quite sturdy handling with your hands uh, some of you might be comfortable using uh, a photo etch bender uh, they can all they can be quite costly um, so sometimes just an old uh, piece of you know melamine to cut on or uh, to use as a flat edge to kind of bend stuff up with a razor blade or with a you know a good pair of tweezers uh, will give you the same results so we're gonna go ahead and take that end and bend it back over slightly so we get that 90 degrees and, uh, and that part is essentially ready to go ahead and install. <laughs> so with that, we're going to go ahead and, if I can find it, there it is. So a useful thing with all bottle caps is there's plenty of them, if you drink, and you can reuse them over and over again. So we're just going to go ahead and take some, uh, I think I'm going to go with the 
gel, some gel super glue. Um, this is a Loctite brand, and uh, it's a little bit more viscous than normal super glue. So it kind of stays in place. It doesn't like to pool out or uh, flow into any uh, gaps you don't want it to. So what I'm going to do is take a regular toothpick and sanding stick. What I'm going to do is kind of put my finger over the top and run it over the edge at a slight angle. And I'm going to flip it over, feel for that flat edge that I just made, and do the same thing on the other side. And what that's going to do is give me a nice, sharp edge to work with. And it's, I'm going to be, a little bit, be able to be a little bit more precise as far as how I'm going to apply the super glue. So what I'm going to do is kind of hold the piece here like so. And then all I'm going to do is dip very little bit, very little bit of super glue onto the edge. And I'm just going to touch the outside of those prongs that I've kind of just bent with tweezers. And once that's done, put it on the side. Because I put it in the inside, I can still grab this. I don't want to put too much pressure on it because I don't want to hold it as tight as I can. But I'm going to hold it with just a slight amount of pressure. And then we're just going to go ahead and seat this right onto the fan shroud here. It doesn't look like it's cooperating much. It's a slower acting super glue, so we have a little bit of time to work with it. And there we go. So we're all nicely installed in there. It's minimal overhang. Uh, again, in the instructions, actually, you know what? We can actually get that part that's actually supposed to go on top of it. And we'll go ahead and cut that off of the fret, or the start of the sprue tree. Don't need to make it super, super perfect on the cuts. We're just doing a dry fit right now, just to see how kind of everything looks. And so here we have our intake manifold. And we can go ahead and line up the holes on here. And there we go. So that's you know sitting on there fairly snug. Now you can see that these are in fact hidden away. So again, a lot of that detail down there you're not really going to see, but if you have the hood open, it's going to it's going to spruce things up a little bit. And uh, rather than you know where it was stock, where there was absolutely nothing there. It's uh, definitely a lot more than what we had. So, put that down to the side. And move on to the next little bit, which here in the instructions is the actual shroud that goes over the radiator. So, looking at this, I'm wondering how that's actually going to fit on. But it seems like it's just going to be a hollow piece that kind of sits over top of it. So we're looking for part 35 in our fret. And where is it? No, it's okay, so it's this big this is this big piece right along here. So for actually cutting photo etch, you know, I don't have an acrylic sheet that I cut on, I don't have a tile. Uh, I have some, you know, a nice piece of three quarter inch thick melamine scrap that I had left over. And what I do have is a scalpel. Uh, it's a rather large blade, but what I like about this is because it's rounded, 
I can kind of put the tip where the piece is and I can kind of rock it back which makes a nice clean cut little very minimal if any cleanup at all and I can just visually point where it's going to go and then I feel it sink in and that means it's cut through so we're going to go ahead and cut the rest of the part off go. So that piece is cut off now and as you can see we're going to oops back it out a bit. Come on. There we go. Okay. So as you can see around the edges we have no you know edge of the Photoshop the uh, the photo etch left over. It's all a nice clean cut. If we did uh, we can come along with some uh, some jewelers files uh, in place, you know, for instance, if we had some nubs left over here, what we could do is place our tweezers inside the piece, take a jeweler's file, and sand that down. But there doesn't appear to be anything there that's going to hold up uh, the construction at all. So, we don't have to worry about that. And so, on the instruction sheet, it looks like we're doing these bends at what appears to be flat edges. That's odd. Okay. So we'll go ahead and bend that down. So essentially what we're going to do is where the, the kind of guidelines are, where the bends we're going to go are going to be on the inside of the part. So where we're going to bend you know, this piece here at 90 degrees into the part. And then there's a marking on the outside here for where this is going to bend out. And that's also the 90. And then we've got this tricky bit here, we've got a thinner set of pliers for that. a larger flat nose just so that I have some nice even pressure across the entire piece. There we are. So there's our piece all nicely bent out. We can go ahead and test fit this in the actual. Test fit this in the actual bay. And there we go. So that's actually sitting in there quite nice on its own. It's got enough of a guy that it's going to sit on. But it looks like the other side doesn't want to sit flush because there's a very slight bit of the nub still left, which is okay. We still have time. We haven't installed it yet, glued anything, which is why we test fit. So we're just going to take 
jeweler's file, small jeweler's file, and then just work. I tend to like to work in one direction. It usually cuts on the end stroke, these ones, uh, but I find it takes off less material when it goes on the back stroke. Um, and this way I'm not ruining too much material or I'm not putting too much unneeded pressure on the actual part itself. And then I just like to work slowly with it so that way I get the correct fit. There we go. So that's uh, that's all done. Now we'll go ahead and put that back on. See how we're doing. And that looks really nice. So everything fits properly. We're all good. We're in the green. So what I'm going to do is my super glue is dried out. Let me check with the piece of paper. Yeah, it's almost gone there. So uh, our super glue. Work with little bits at a time. So the less material you, often the less material you use, the less uh, less goes to waste. And uh, the better it is. So we're going to take a little bit on here. And we're going to go straight on the edge. Actually, we're bring it in close so you can see it. So we're going to put a little bead on the edge here. Another bead. On the other edge, and then what we'll do is we'll actually apply the super glue, a little a bit of a more of a hefty dollop, and we'll put it on the back of the radiator shroud. Now it's a little, and I know there's not a lot of space to kind of work with here but there's quite you know it's a little disappointing that there wasn't actually a radiator grill added with any of the sets whether it be hobby design or with uh, with Auber now understandably you can't really see much in there and I mean you could go in, could go in with a dry brush or a, a burnishable paint uh, to kind of get some uh, contrast going there but it's almost for naught because of the amount that you're actually going to see in there, so it's not really uh, super necessary. So we're just going to press our edges down. Everything's fitting nice and snug. And I think what we'll do for extra kind of protection. We'll take another little bead. We're going to run it along the back side here where it's not going to be seen. Remember, this is going to be covered. Just to ensure that it's going to stick in here nice and firm. The side of the piece hasn't really flatten down, so apply it a little bit under there, a little bit of pressure. I'm just going to hold it so that way it holds it down. I'm going to do that for a couple of seconds just to make sure that the super glue is taking hold. So it is a little bit of a slower curing time than uh, traditional super glues, um, but the ability to, to place it where you want to, I find is a useful tool. We'll put a little bit more on the inside of that join line there. And we're good to go. And so that's that. And we'll 
we'll just go ahead and put back on the shroud. Why are you not fitting? possible that these little nubs on the inside are what's preventing that from sitting down because of how wide this actually sticks out from the original. And I didn't call out for it on the instructions which is a little bit of a shame but that's why we test fit and test fit and test fit those nubs gone that should go ahead and seat nicely and that it does there we go so that's sitting in there nice now you can see the detail it's not really shown but it's there and it'll add a little extra flare once the hood's up so we'll go ahead and get moved on to the next part okay so moving on now with the uh, the engine bay we've got some some kind of smaller little latches which looks like uh, that are going on right here which should be just aft of the wheel arch and these are fitting just behind the, what appears to be a reservoir of some sort. So these should, guys yeah, should be fitting in right about here. Which looks about right and then before that kind of curves down. So that's just that. And I th it's going only on this one side it looks like. I can't see anything mentioning it over here. On the left side, so must mean that it goes there and he here and here only. So put the actual engine bit off to the side. We'll take the manifold off, put it down, and so we're looking for parts like for 21, 22 that appears to go underneath. So I'll glue that on after. And then part number 83. It looks like we need three of them for the tops of these. So we'll go ahead and find number 21 first on the main fret here. Turn this around so I can actually see the numbers. Pops number 21. Okay. So maybe this little guy right there. This one guy right here. So we'll just go ahead and cut him loose. Make sure he doesn't fly away on us because that would really suck. There we go. So we got those folds on the, uh, the inside, which I'm assuming then this is going to be the bottom. And we flipped it over, and then there's the bends on the other side. So what we're going to have to do is do some precision bending work. And it looks like they're at about 45 degrees. Let's just take the inner ones, kind of bend that down other side and then those flat. So 
it's sort of a bend like that. And we'll just go ahead and move on to the next side. I'm really comfortable using my hands here. But you might feel comfortable using a second set of pliers or tweezers to help accomplish this task. And there we go. So there's our piece all bent up. Put that down wrap chair. And then we're looking for part number 22, which is going to be that little piece that goes underneath it. And which is right above it. Here. So what I'm going to do is cut these this little piece here first, which is going to prevent those two little tongs from kind of bending out. I'm going to use my finger just to kind of hold it in place and make that last cut and then pull the fret away. There we go. And there's our tiny piece. Now, because these pieces are so small, because there's not a lot to do with holding them, now you have the option of getting uh, tacky pencils or uh, some other sort of little mini photo etch holders. What I find is kind of usually the easiest and simplest way is just to go ahead and take a toothpick, wrap some blue tack around it, and then I can go ahead and handle this to my heart's desire. So now what I'm going to do is bring this piece over, kind of flip it on its back a bit. Bring it, uh, we're going to end up using, because these are flat surfaces and because we don't really need them to, we want them to tack rather quickly, we're going to head, go ahead and use regular super glue. In my case I use Gorilla super glue just because it's cheap and at hand gets the job done as far as what I need it to do. Go ahead and find our sanding stick. Sand off all the excess super glue from the previous application. And a nice little sharp tip there going on in our toothpick. And then we'll go ahead and apply the super glue directly to the top of this part. Now it's going to stick. Unfortunately, let's be careful for dangling. We can kind of keep it all together. And there we go. That's all done. It's all installed. Don't want to lose it. And then we can go ahead with the uh, the bolts going over top of that. Sorry, I have a toothpick in my mouth. So those are parts 83. And I'm not sure if those parts are actually on this fret or if they're on the smaller fret. And I think that they are. They are indeed on the uh, the smaller fret here, which contains some of the hood pins. And yeah, that, they're all in there. So we'll go ahead and open this guy up. smaller pieces out here and what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to find my smaller scalpel I remember where I put it hmm. 
sharper blade. So we're going to go in with the sharper blade. And we're just going to make, because these are so thin and small, don't really need to make heavy cuts onto them. Relatively small, fragile, and easy to come off. Now, really, these aren't kind of necessary, but at least sort of the groundwork. For basic stuff, and I like the small details. I'm a sucker for detail. And what we can do is a little, little drop of super glue. Onto those parts. You can actually take the dry tip like a wet cotton or toothpick and that should give it enough stick to go on to there. So that's on, so all we need to do is repeat that twice more. It's picking up the camera quite well, but I'm just trying to focus on seeing where these parts are and then getting them to fit in. Okay. So there's our part nice and completed, and you can probably, if not, see those smaller parts pins in there. And then now we can go ahead and zoom back out and adjust our eyes. And so this guy was going right right in here. And back in. Do a little bit of super glue. Apply it where we're gonna put the part. I find it's always easier to put it where I want the part than actually applying it to the part itself. And I think that's a little bit wider than it is. I'm going to put a little bit more. Out there. We're going to attach our piece, which I put in backwards. That's all nicely put in there. I think what we could do is just take a little bit because the center, thinner stuff kind of runs into the gaps. We could put it on the edges there just to hold the piece in to make sure it's not going to blow off when we use the airbrush or for handling it. So we're going to try to put the handling of it to a minimum. Okay, now let me just check. Yeah, sure. yeah, that's not really giving 
as much to put in there. But we're going to go ahead with the rest of the instructions. So now, so we've completed these guys, we've put these on. Uh, this one that kind of goes on the top of the intake manifold cover, uh, we're just going to leave that off. There's some, some other parts from Hobby Design that we'll use for that. There's some other pieces that are going right on top of this guy. Uh, so we're going to focus on these guys, parts number 46, which goes on the left and the right wheel wells. Just aft forward, uh, this kind of little triangle piece, or the uh, cross piece right here, so it should sit nicely in here from uh, what it looks like on the instructions. So we'll go ahead and put this off to the side for a second. Point number 46, we'll switch over to the larger blade. Yeah, there we go. So there's 46, there's two pieces. And we'll just cut one at a time here. We can cut both ends, but we'll cut one off right now. And we'll come back and cut the other once we're ready. So there's one cut out. And what it's asking for is to be folded down and on top of itself. And then I and then what looks like it's gonna curve down onto the actual uh, well itself. So Okay, there we go. So we've got our cut line here. And we've got our toothpick with the super glue. We're just going to put a very thin layer. the inside of this guy here. And then with that, should be able to just take it, fold it slightly on its own. Trying to hand fist it, just gonna a little bit lighter than normal. And there we go. I do have a little bit of the photo etch fret still sticking out there, so we're just gonna adjust this guy so we don't have too much of the overhang. In so we have barely enough sticking out. There we go. So that's all nice. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and apply this to where we're going. So it looks like. Excess super glue on there. It's dried up. And we'll go ahead. Snap that on. And take our tweezers. Don't go flying on me.
There we go. So there's one done. So we'll go ahead and do the other side, uh, and then we'll move on to uh, what would be the next step. We'll come back when we've uh, when we've done the other side, and we'll see how we're going to proceed. All right, we're back. We're going to go ahead and uh, work on the intake manifold uh, portion of the engine. Uh, so we've gone ahead and glued this part A1 onto the uh, large intake manifold here. Um, we've also cut out and cleaned up the supercharger and several braces that are indicated on the installation steps. Uh, now, one interesting bit to note is this thing here, the actual Mercedes emblem, uh, that's actually supposed to install right onto the manifold because it isn't actually present on the bumper. Um, so what we're, but uh, because we're doing the Hammond edition, it's actually calling for us to remove the Mercedes Benz star and apply these uh, Hammond logos as well as a bunch of other uh, photo etch onto the actual engine. Um, so basically what will end up happening is these is we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to get into the spray booth probably tomorrow and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, paint this puppy up at least in a gray primer so that we can have a general sense of how everything's kind of building and working together And uh, we'll go from there. But uh, as it, it sits right now, everything's kind of ready to go. Um, so we'll get, in the meantime, I'll get all of the, uh, the photo etch done up on here. And uh, we'll take some photos and I'll show you guys. I'll put down the, uh, the Facebook, Instagram. Uh, if you have Twitter, I'll put it on Twitter. And then I'll also log it in the uh, Smug Mug page of the uh, the build progress uh, so I'll do that while you guys are away and uh, and then hopefully get it into some primer and then we'll start going about uh, painting up all of the necessary bits on the inside so we're probably gonna end up going with uh, we're gonna go semi-gloss black over everything and then what we'll end up doing is uh, picking out the individual parts, you know, the engine block, um, you know, the radiator and its shroud and the different uh, reservoirs on each side. And we'll pick those out with some, some different metallics. Um, and uh, so we'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. And we'll see you next time.